All right, guys, so it feels like every single time a brand new character as of late comes out for Dragon Ball Legends, it just feels like a brand new game, honestly. Like, I, I feel like the tier list from, I don't know, a month ago is completely different from today's tier list, and it's just... It's crazy how the power creep is real. It's legitimate. And we're not even in the Legends Festival yet. So uh, some pretty crazy stuff. I am going to give you guys my top 10. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you guys my top 5 um, units in Dragon Ball Legends. Followed by the next top 10 notable units. I'm going to be doing that because honestly, it's after the top 5, I believe, I have a list here. It's a slight drop off. And by the way, uh, just really quick before I even start this video off. Uh, my tier list is going to be completely probably different than your tier list and your tier list is probably going to be different than the guy below your guys's comments tier list nobody's tier list is the same this is all technically speaking opinion based technically speaking because the first person obviously um you know we're, we're going to get to the tier list really quick but I'm, I'm going to just start off with the obvious and by the way if you guys do find value in today's video and enjoy the content make sure you guys simply like subscribe and all that good stuff but really quick guys i want to start off with the obvious it's crazy it's crazy. You know, the, the the last time I remember a unit coming in and doing so much damage the way he's doing right now is when Super Saiyan 2 Team Gohan LF got his Zenkai, the red one. And I, I feel like in terms of the damage wise, it's the exact same thing. It's absolutely crazy how much damage this guy does. And not in just, it, it's, it's insane that he's like, I would say he's the most complete unit in the in the game we've seen in a very long time. He just does so much. It's like, I'm trying to spill out words, but I can't. He does 150% damage for just existing. For just existing. He pretty much solos anybody, you know, that crosses his path. Even green units. Except uh, some certain units that I'm going to get to in just one bit. Um, this guy right here, he has endurance. Obviously, similar to LF Jiren. So, he could kind of tank rising rushes as well as output damage. Honestly, he has double card draw speed a majority of the time. Uh, he has a color nullification. He has cover nullification as well. His green card does a bunch of things. Destroys your enemy's cards. His super does a crazy amount of damage. Restores his own vanish gauge. I mean, honestly, like I could just... I could go on for a long, long, long time. I'm actually really happy this guy is really good. And uh, um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that because I can all see this guy does so much. It's absolutely bonkers. He reminds me, like I said, when uh, Super Saiyan 2 Team Gohan got a Zenkai in terms of the damage output. He just does so much damage. It's absolutely wild. Now, really quick, that's the number one unit. Let's go from top five to top two really quick. And then let's just cross over the border outside of the top five after that. So coming in at number five, and this tier list was extremely tricky uh, to do. And look, guys, I have this cooler here, LF Cooler, at 13 red stars. So he's absolutely busted. Now, I'm going to place him at the number five slot. The reason being why is because everybody right now is running LF Beast Gohan. I mean, honestly, it's scary to run a red unit just because of one specific unit. You literally run it. It's like a staple. It's like you literally run into Beast Gohan probably i don't know like out of 100 matches you play probably like 90 matches which is pretty crazy 90 percent of the time you'll run into beast gohan and that's that's a low number i feel like you run into beast gohan even more than that if if that's even possible so you know if this cooler and mark my words here tell me in the comment section down below if you guys agree or not this lf cooler here would not be so high up the list if he didn't have the locking ability of, on his strike cards so, obviously, you guys know that he locks you in uh, upon landing the first strike card for an X amount of time, like two, three timer counts. Um, and it's it's really broken. If you take that out of this unit, he would probably be outside of the top 10. If you take that specific ability out. If you put it in, he's a top 5, top 4. I, you can even play some top 4 in my personal opinion. Uh, but I'm just going to play some top 5 because of Beast Gohan. That's it. That's the only reason why, right? If Beast Gohan didn't exist... I would probably play some probably, I don't know, like fourth or third or something like that. But number four, um, this this is a really tricky one. I'm going to go with Super Ultra Vegito. The reason being why I'm, I'm going to place this guy number four, and he could be number five as well. Honestly, you, you can just flip flop these around. It's really, really difficult to make. But the reason why I'm going to place this character number four is because he's the closest thing to Beast Gohan in terms of combo longevity combo longevity with damage as well as 
able to tank rising rushes right so beast gohan has double card draw speed this guy has double card draw speed right um and, and it's funny that i'm putting him over lf cooler because lf cooler completely counters him but that's not the that's not the case anymore um because you don't see that many you know uh uh you don't see that many lf coolers running around the meta if lf cooler like i said if lf cooler it, it's like a, it's like a chain right if beast gohan never came out you would never see so much lf coolers if you never see so much lf coolers then then this character would be more you know you guys get the point it's like a chain but this character here has double card draw speed very similar to beast gohan he has endurance very similar to beast gohan the only issue and that i have with this character here is that he doesn't have cover nullification that comes around so easily like beast gohan or any other character uh you have to literally dish out a, a counter with your strike card to activate a um a a cover nullification which is kind of unfortunate but that's why i would place him either fourth or fifth you can swap these two around the number three spot man i'm surprised and i got her at 14 stars the number three spot i'm definitely gonna give to superhero pan this character is so fun and so annoying to play against. Now, really quick, the number two spot and the number three spot have something in common. And I believe it's going to be the trend of Dragon Ball Legends moving forward. And this trend, and I really, really strongly believe this, is being able to not cover uh, change specific units. Because every other unit now has cover nullification to cover, I mean, to counter your cover change. Now, it's called combo breaking. This pen is the prime example of combo breaking, right? The reason being why is because obviously uh, every time she gets hit by a uh, strike or a blast card, um, she does a lot of things, right? Uh, number one, she inflicts all enemies with two substitution count, activates one, similar to LF Cooler, but reversed. But what's really special is she reduces enemy's key by 15, activates six times only, which kind of sucks, but reduces enemy's key by 15 is amazing. So for each card you use, you're technically getting rid of another one, right? In terms of key. She does what, she, she does exactly what, um, as a matter of fact that I'm thinking about it, she does exactly what green um, Rosé, Transforming Rosé does, except it's literally 15 instead of 5 uh, key reduction, which is really broken. Um, and besides that, man, she does so much. Now, a lot of you guys might be asking, DB Zoom, she's red. Yes, she's red, but only for 5 timer counts. Her main ability only takes five timer counts to pop and once you pop it cover i mean uh color element is not a factor for 60 timer counts which is pretty crazy because the match is 180 timer counts and the match doesn't even last 180 timer counts especially when beast go hunters uh, roaming around and stuff like that so this pen here is pivotal for teams um not just in terms of that but in terms of her z ability her z ability is one of the best you can give um, you, you can place this character at the leader slot and literally just dish out not only health, as you guys can see, 20%, uh, but as well as um, critical. Very similar to the old school red um, god Goku. He does the exact same thing pretty much, right? So this pen has an amazing top tier Z ability in itself. Uh, and besides that, she does so much else like for landing. Take a look at this, guys. For landing strike cards, uh, blast cards, she <laughs> she gives an extra 5% um inflicted damage buff to all allies for 30 timer counts 30 timer counts that's a lot that is a lot that's like 20 percent of the battle that's a lot for just using a activation for just activating you you could literally you use a strike and swipe strike and swipe and just kind of play that game if you really want but that's insane you line like let's just say four cards five cards that's already 25 percent extra damage buffs including the other extra damage buffs she does uh, dish out to, to allies, which is an extra five, cannot be canceled all the way up to uh, 50%. So really crazy stuff, like 30, 40% damage buffs to your allies for just playing the game. It's it's insane. It's insane. And she does so much other stuff and she pairs really well with the Ultra Broly, which I unfortunately do not have. I spent 20,000 uh, crystals on this Broly, um, which is the second best unit in the game, I believe. Uh, the reason being why is... You know, man, it's like I said at the beginning of the video, or when I mentioned Pan, it's not about cover change anymore, it's about combo breaking. This character right here, not only does, does he combo break, he, he does cover change, obviously, but if that doesn't work, he definitely combo breaks because he can tank, he can heal really well, especially alongside with Pan. He can heal, he can tank, and his unique gauge is phenomenal. Now, I was praising this guy when he originally first came out. A lot of people were dishing hate out to this character 
and I, I just don't see why. Honestly, like his unique gauge is pretty insane. The more you play against this character, honestly, like not only does he reduce your enemy's vanish to zero, so let's just say Beast Gohan comes in and he starts doing damage, which is not a lot because he heals and he's a tanky character in general, but he destroys. Uh, your vanish gauge right he destroys your key by 30 and as well as one card so he drops your combo almost instantly uh instantly alongside with pen kind of doing the same thing with the key reduction and it's insane these are the type of characters you want on your team and i believe going forward these are going to be the characters that are going to be having longevity in the game due to the fact that cover nullification doesn't really apply to these characters because they combo break, right? Very similar to future LF Gohan. When he cover changes, he destroys two cards or the brand new potential lock Piccolo. He cover changes, he destroys two cards. That's very pivotal because it combo breaks, not cover change, right? Or not cover uh, change activation. So yeah, very, very good. Uh, besides that, he does so much other things. He heals uh, with his main ability, obviously 20%. Um, he also uh, heals with his, uh, you know, unique gauge. He heals for coming in the battle. So there's a lot of healing with this character itself. Amazing character. I spent 20,000 crystals, but I didn't go any further because it was right before the big announcement. And I knew that something big was going to come. And I I'm glad that, you know, I saved up enough because I only need two more copies to max out fully this Beast Gohan here. So I'm definitely going to go for the max out on this Beast Gohan. Already maxed out Piccolo and Pan, but really quick, guys, let's give out some... Uh, some notable units outside of the top five, in my personal opinion. Like I said, these are all uh, subject, like these are all, it's all opinion in the end of the day, right? So um, the next two I really wanna mention are green units, which is Super Saiyan uh, Trunks alongside uh, this Dragon Fist Goku. Now, the reason why I'm gonna mention these two units is obviously because Beast Gohan exists. And, you know, although Beast Gohan does have, uh, you know, color nullification, you know, for an X amount of times, 10 timer counts, especially when he uh, he pops his green, comes in the field and stuff like that. That doesn't really matter for Beast Gohan. But in terms of everything else, if, if he gets caught lacking with a green, especially one of these two greens right here that outputs a lot of damage, such as Super Saiyan Trunks, as well as Dragon Fist Goku, especially Dragon Fist Goku is great pairing up alongside uh, Beast Gohan, I feel like. Uh, just because obviously uh, Beast Gohan has cover nullification and so does this uh, Dragon Fist Goku. So... If you get priority with these characters, it's pretty much GG at this point in time, right? Uh, so priority is massive with these characters. But in terms of damage potential, like Dragon Fist Ultimate will probably one-shot uh, Beast Gohan if, if it racks up perfectly, right? With uh, Element Factor, as well as this uh, Trunks, as, which is insane. So um, yeah, those two are notable units. Another one that's really making a comeback, and I have to really scroll down for this one because it's on orders. But um, I would say it'd be um, <clears throat> Revival Gohan. Now, this character right here is going up my list slightly even more that Beast Gohan came out because the hybrids is going up my list even more because Beast, Go Beast Gohan came out, right? He can heal with his main ability. And after that, honestly, uh, revival is one of his main factors, right? That, that he does. Uh, but after he revives, he does a great amount of damage. Um, his green card is really good. Besides that, he doesn't do too much else because he is an older unit, but he's still a very damage high putting out, you know, unit. He has some card draw speed. He's, he's just still very valuable, especially with, you know, having endurance in Beast Gohan and then revival on this Gohan. It makes rising rushes a lot more difficult for the opposing uh, team. So that's another notable unit. Another one is obviously Tapion. <clears throat> There's not really much to explain here, but I like using him uh, alongside, um, which I'm gonna call it Beast Gohan because you can tank, obviously, a Rising Rush with Tapion. And then after that, uh, obviously, you know, Beast Gohan not only heals up, but then he gets Endurance. But this Tapion in general is, is just a very good unit. But it's crazy how he came out, like, I don't know, like, three, four, five months ago, something like that, four months ago. And it's insane how, how he's been lasting. But coming into the Sludgeons Festival, we have to really start thinking about exactly this power creep, man. It's It's... It's scary for the game if you really want to keep up, right? I believe after this Legends Festival, they're gonna, there's going to be a slight drop-off, right? January, February, perhaps, you know, one good unit there um, for, for Battle Hour. But then coming in for, let's just say, the anniversary, which is May, June, July, then the Power Creep is going to ramp up back up. So, yeah, tap you on. Android 17 and 18 is another one. Massive, massive, massive. Uh, reds are falling off uh, tremendously due to Beast Gohan, but... Honestly, like uh, he, Andrew 17, 18 has, you know, uh, 
switch the switch mechanic. So, uh, you know, with the switch mechanic, yes, they'll, they'll re-counter Beast Gohan. But at, at this point in time, right? At this point in time, you just don't want to bring in a red because, you know, Beast Gohan even has color nullification if they do switch. Um, and if they do switch, there's still going to be a counter on the team besides Beast Gohan itself, right? There's still going to be another, uh, let's just say, a yellow unit, right? Let's just give that an example, right? So, yeah, uh, Androids is top 10. Uh, or this is just a list. Super Gogeta is another one. Obviously, Super Gogeta is slightly replaceable. Um, he's still really good, but there's just no point in using him over Beast Gohan. Um, and I have him at 14 stars, man. I really, really do. Um, but yeah, but in my personal opinion, there's no point on using him over Beast Gohan. Uh, but if, if let's just say, hypothetically speaking, fusions uh, get a buff in the very near future... Um, his stock will go right back up, right? So that's kind of how it works. I already mentioned Future Gohan. Future Gohan has the combo break mechanic. And MUI dropped off pretty bad. Uh, we also have Vegito Blue. And then as well as LF Future Vegeta. That's another another notable unit right there. So yeah, guys, comment down below. Uh, what do you guys think about this current meta? What do you think about this list? Remember, my list could be completely different than yours. This is just from my personal experience playing uh, right now in Dragon Ball Legends versus and with these characters itself. But if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you guys simply like, subscribe, comment down your top five below. Uh, but yeah, like, subscribe, and all the good stuff. And I'll definitely catch you guys once again on the next one. Have a good one. Peace.